All right, ladies, let's gather on back in. How many's enjoyed the sessions? How many's taken some notes? Because I sure have, like, pages. And your notes are going to look different than mine because God speaks to us all individually, which is wonderful. So I'm appreciative of that. So thank. let's give our speakers a hand. I know we haven't heard everybody yet, but still. I appreciate their time and preparation and uh, just coming to be a part of today's conference to pour into you and me, all of us. So um, I'm going to be talking about walking in faith. So I'm going to be with you for the next 40 minutes before we have lunch. So stay with me. And the, and the reason I think it's going to be okay that you're going to stay with me is because this is going to kind of be a group participation. Okay, so we're going to work together a little bit on this one. So Alicia's going to pass out some sheets for me. Everybody's going to get one. And everybody's got a pen attached to your, to your notebook. All right, I need a chair. Can you help me with this chair? Yes, somebody grab this chair and bring it up here. She likes a challenge. Missy likes a challenge, doesn't she? Thank you, Missy. I appreciate it. All right. We're going to start out talking about walking by faith. Look around the room here. Beautiful room of ladies. Now, there's a true statement I'm getting ready to say. We all have a level of faith. Every last one of us. We're born with a, a human level of faith, right? So, but what it, a human level of faith, what does that mean exactly? That means we were all given the ability to exercise and determine to have confidence in any object or any person. We have that choice. That's a human level of faith. We can decide what we have faith in. So how many believe this is a chair? Okay, we can all agree that this is a chair. So I need a volunteer. What is your name in the back in the black sweatshirt? Christy, come on up. Let's give Christy a hand. Okay. Do you feel real nervous right now? Don't feel nervous. Just, I just want you to look at everybody. Just, just look at everybody. See, you know, they're all people just like you. They have feelings. They cry. They laugh. They take one foot in front of the other and they walk. So you're, you're good. So you had faith. Go ahead and sit. Christy had faith to walk up here. She, she had that human level of faith to get up out of her seat. She believed she could get up out of her seat and walk. She had faith that she could sit on this chair. Why didn't you even question? Why didn't you even stand here and say, will this hold me? She had human level of faith that it would hold you, right? Okay, well, I'm going to give her an object. Does she have faith to take it? Yes, this is a human level of faith. So I'm going to take that back. Now, so we all just saw the demonstration that we all, what? Well, Indian giver. Well, she can have it if she wants, but I kind of need it as a guide up here so I don't get lost and I don't lose track of my time. So we've all seen the demonstration of a human level of faith, okay? So we're going to go to a little bit of different place today. We are going to step out of the human level of faith, and we're going to talk about how we need to walk in spiritual faith. Now, not everybody can walk in spiritual faith, only those who believe in Jesus Christ. Now, I could give her a Bible. This is where the spiritual faith is hard for the average person. You can talk to anybody that's not a believer in Jesus, and you can say, this Bible here, you can take the Bible because you believe you can hold it. But this is the infallible word of God. This is a guide for your life. This is what you need to have eternal life, to live forever. You've put your faith in Jesus Christ. Now, a human level of faith is going to say, nah. So you can, your human level of faith can say, nah, or yeah, I believe that, okay? Now, when you believe it, then you step into your spiritual faith. Thank you. You can actually... Thank you. She did great. We'll just leave this here. 
you step into your spiritual faith. And that's we're here. We want to let our faith arise, okay? We want our faith to go to a level of just believing to another place in the supernatural realm in our, in our spiritual walk, okay? Now, for the next 45 minutes, we are going to work together, like I said, okay? And But before we move together on your worksheet, and I'm going to have you get in groups of at least two. So you at least have to find somebody to work with on this, okay? So let's just go ahead and move there before we move on. Find at least one person, and you can have three or four people, no more than four. Let's not have like a group of eight or ten. And you might have to sit close. So, if, Mandy, if you and Candy are working together, you just, just have to move. Okay. Now, we're not going to start that. You just have your partner. Everybody good? All right. All right. No more than four, right? Okay. Before we go in there, we know that uh, faith, without faith, is impossible to please God, right? So we have to have faith. And so I also want to see in... Um, Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So faith is what brings the things of, that God has provided for us from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. And then we also read in 1 John 5.4, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So our faith in that scripture is the victory that enables us to overcome the world, okay? So we're going to talk a little bit about walking in faith. And on your worksheet, there's some different scriptures. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to read these scriptures. You don't have to read them out loud together, but you can separately look them up and read these scriptures. And then I want you to discuss these scriptures with your team. And then I want you to answer the questions. There's only one question. One, one of them has two questions. And then we're going to come back, swing back around, and we're going to talk about it openly, okay? So find your partner, read your scriptures, talk about it as quietly as you can with your group so we're not like, ah. and then we're going to come back around. Start with Mark 9, 17 through 25. We're going to give you about five minutes. Holly, do you have a question? Just the one, just the the first page, we're going to do Mark 9, 17 through 25. You have about five minutes. All right, time's up for this first one. I like you guys are doing good. Like you're interacting well with one another. I love that. So and you, there's some there's some real good discussion going on. So that's great. All right, we we need some A type personality to be spokespeople from you know like your groups. So let's just let's just give a, a maybe two or three people that would like to kind of bring to light what your group talked about in discussion about what that passage was saying about faith. Does anybody want to? Okay, Miss Penny. Okay. Anybody else want to add to that? Ashley? Did everybody hear that too? Do I need to pass around the mic, which I can? It's super humbling, you know, what, what this is saying. You know, when we talk about everything, like everything is hard, right? And with everything, we tend to say everything for everybody else, but not so much everything for myself. So when he says... Um, everything is possible. We always think it's possible for you, but maybe not possible for me. One more on that first one. I think this is good because it helps us glean from one another. Sometimes we go to conferences and we think the speakers are the only people that know anything, but we have some powerful women of God here. 
So what stuck with our group was that the disciples didn't have the faith enough to heal him. And sometimes that's kind of like, no matter how many God, how many times God proves his faithfulness to us and proves that he's there for us in every trial and every tribulation, we still lack faith in him. All right, we're going to go to the second question. Why is it hard for us to have faith in God? Why do you think people have a hard time finding having faith in God? Let's have another group. You guys are awesome, but... Well, having faith is is the belief in your head, right? You you know that you know that you know that you have faith. But the hard part is the action behind the faith to press in and keep pressing in and keep pressing in so you get what you need from Jesus. That's true. But the question is why do we why do we think it's hard to have faith? Why? Because of lack of understanding? Oh, that's a good one. What else? What what would be another reason? Hold on. A lot of natural and human distractions, you know, like I myself tend to look at things logically and what makes sense, and faith sometimes doesn't make sense. We'll do one more. What would be another barrier for us not to have faith? To recognize the authority Jesus had at the time. He was come on the scene. He was healing people. And so that was kind of a new thing. And once that started, everybody was like, you know, going towards him. And then when it got right down to it, the gentleman had to ask himself, help me with my unbelief. What he needed to do was recognize the authority Jesus had in healing and deliverance. Our human nature wants to reason things out. You know, and I was talking to... Professor Brown earlier, and she was talking about how when we get so much knowledge and and, and we know so many in, in America, people they know a lot of stuff. It's, it's harder for them to walk in faith because they they can't analyze. It. They try to analyze everything. Like, how can this make sense? And I've got to see every angle. But faith is believing without seeing. So that's good. All right, let's go to the next the next one, which is Mark ten. 17 through 27, and let's have another five-minute discussion. All right, time's up. Now let's just have an open discussion about this. Five minutes goes really fast. Like, when you're trying to discuss something, it's like, wow done already all right let's talk about uh what is this passage saying about faith two or three people not everybody all at once <laughs> it is saying that you have to surrender everything that includes that could be your family that could be your children that could be your possessions that could be everything if you want to um be saved then you need to surrender and he was not willing to surrender all right anybody want to answer that Andrea? what stood out to us was how he just referred to jesus as a good teacher his perspective still of who he was before him was still off and when you're when you're talking to someone as a teacher as a student i'm hoping to one day have the same amount of knowledge as you and be equal to you whereas his ways are always above our ways, and I need to be willing to submit to him as more than just a teacher, but as God. Really good point. One more. Yep. One thing that um, was mentioned in our group was just that he had an understanding that what he had wasn't enough. And he understood that. That's why he came to Jesus and asked him, but then he was unwilling to do what he needed to do to have enough. Okay, so the next question, we talk about pride because we see how pride could uh, be shown in this scripture. How can pride interfere with our faith? What are some reasons that pride can interfere with our faith, Lisa? Did you say no, you don't? Okay. Um, so one thing that we said was um, faith requires humility. 
and pride is the opposite of that. So the opposite of pride um, is humility, and it requires humility and faith. And we talked through that sometimes um, just even the things that faith has gotten us, we can become prideful about in our in our flesh. And so is pride is just very sneaky. One more. How can pride interfere with your faith, your walk in faith? Pride says, I can do it. Faith says, I trust God. Pride puts it on, on on the spotlight on us, and we we do things in our own abilities. God wants us to get away from that. Faith is is definitely having humility and trusting in Him. All right, let's go to the next page, James two nineteen, and we're gonna read this and we're gonna talk about what this passage is saying about faith. So another five minutes. Okay, time's up. You believe that God is one, you do well. The demons also believe and shudder. So as a group discussion, what did you come up with that? What, what the scripture is saying about faith? Anybody want to elaborate what your group discussed? Maybe some of the quiet ones that haven't said anything yet. Hey, Gabby, love it. So... We said that, like, believing is, um, will cause the enemy to shudder, but having faith will call it, cause the enemy to flee. So we talked, and we said we have faith, and we obey. They shudder, but they don't obey. More? Let's group here. You've been quiet. Well, you did say one. Well, so, so it's it's a it's a series of actions that start with loving God and submitting to God and then partnering with God. One more. One more. All right. Nobody. For one, and just to share what you discussed. Nobody? Okay, we'll just move on to the next one. Is believing the same as having faith? And why? Already, she's she can't hardly sit still. She wants to answer. No, no, it's not because um, believing is like learning what they teach you in Sunday school versus faith is being spoken to when you're reading the Bible. All right. Anybody else want to? By God. By God. <laughs> Anybody else? Lisa? I think faith is an applied action, and it's also a substance. So believe you can believe something, but until you apply it, then you, it turns into a substance, and it's in motion. And it goes back to when we had our friend, was it Brandy? Candy? Christy. Sorry, Christy. I was trying to remember her name. Goes back to when she was sitting here at the human level of faith, and I handed her the word of God. Most people believe that this is the Bible. They believe it. But when we have faith, we put our trust in what it says, and we, and we surrender and submit. So there's definitely a difference between believing and faith. So we're going to move on to the next one. Romans 1, 16 through 17. Five minutes. All right, let's talk about it. Share with me some of your group discussions about what this is saying about faith, our faith, and how we walk in faith. Yeah. 
we got walk by faith and not by sight, as long as we keep our faith and it's unwavering, we are the ones that God will show his righteousness to. Somebody else share with us. I was just going to say about the part, um, you know, for, for in it, like the salvation, the righteousness of God is revealed. And I just think, you know, we can only be righteous or right when we accept the Lord and his gift of salvation. So, one more. This is fun. I love hearing your guys' discussions. One more? All right. I'm like, I'm sure. But <laughs> I just wanted to add something because of the times that we're in, I just showed it to Andrew and them, that it says the two first. We all have to remember that they were first. God was first shown to them. And we have to remember that and honor that because we were drafted in. Are we kind of like the lady that was asking for the crumbs? <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. So the next question, what does the Apostle Paul mean by writing the righteous shall live by faith? Anybody want to tackle that one? What does he mean? The righteous shall live by faith. Alicia? We got that uh, when it says the righteous shall live by faith, it is a lifestyle. You got to walk it out, ladies, every day. Not just on, this is what I wrote, not just on Sundays, not just an occasional midweek, not just in a couple conferences every couple, couple years, but you got to step, every step you take, you got to walk this thing out, even when it's hard. said ideally we shouldn't get a cup of coffee without sifting that through him as well <laughs> i don't know how y'all drink coffee anyway <laughs> i think it's from the devil no <laughs> um i looked it up on my bible app and the righteous shall live by faith is a quote from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4, and it says, Look at the proud, they trust in themselves, and their lives are crooked, but the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God. Habakkuk 2, 4. Now, I just want to add to the righteous shall live by faith in Romans 1, 1, 17. I also like the scripture, James 2, 26. For this, where it says, for just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. So when we read that the righteousness shall live by faith, that just simply means when we're born again, right with God, then we put on the righteousness of Christ. And by that faith, we'll walk it out, just like Alicia said, and we'll produce good works. Like the, we, we're not saved by our works, but when we put on the righteousness of Christ, those works automatically will take place in our life. People will see fruit. You don't. You can't try to live right and try to produce the fruit. They're going to automatically take place as you as you grow in your faith. All right, good discussion. Let's go to the next one. Our last, I think, is our last one. Matthew fourteen twenty nine through thirty one. We're going to take a little bit less time on. Well, actually, let's just go to the last one. We're going to skip that one. Second print. Oh. We can make this the last one then. All right, we'll, we'll skip the very last one. You can do that on your own. So Matthew 14, 29 through 31. I don't want to disappoint you. I know this is a good one, Peter. All right, we're going to cut this one a little bit short because I'm running out of time. So we're just going to pick one of these. Why did Peter's faith fail him when he was walking on the water? Our meta. Lord, you know. Took his eyes off the Lord. Why else? He left the storm distracting him. Yes. The only reason I'm using the mic is so we can hear it in the recording. He let the fear be stronger than his faith. Good. Now, 
I want to go to the next question. Is there anybody willing to share how you maybe have gone through the same circumstance? <laughs> Alicia's like, wait. <laughs> it's the third question. Has anybody experienced the same thing in your life that would, would mind sharing? Do you want to share? When has my, what was the question? When found yourself in the same position. When you received a bad report from a doctor and the doctor has a piece of paper and said it's cancer. Anybody else want to share time? Just too that it's hard to react spiritually to our physical world. I mean, we see the physical, but it's hard sometimes to react spiritually. One more. Anybody want to share time? So you can be going along during the week and doing everything you're supposed to do, read the Bible, pray, just everything, even listen. And then all of a sudden, there's a problem in your life. It doesn't matter where, work, home, and that's all you think about. It takes over everything you're ever being. Now, walking in faith, and you guys can do the other question on your own. Um, take it home and do it. Walking by faith... I have a scripture in my in my living room. I have lots of scriptures in my living room, but this one is for walk by faith, not by sight. Now I want you to show a video. I want to show a video to you of what we're supposed to look like walking in faith. So go ahead. Double click it. Right on the arrow where it's like it looks like play, you just gotta hit that arrow. <laughs> Listen, this is his first time. I'm trying to give everybody a break. I know, Pastor John. It's all right, but it, it might actually be a technical difficulty. So, all right, there we go. strange video to show you. But this is Impala. It's the, the, the Impala. Do you know that the Impala can feet can jump 9.8 feet tall high? Wow. Okay, so do you think there's anything they could couldn't get away from? If something was chasing them, they could just jump over almost a tree, but tree a short tree. But they just but do you know also about the Impala that they can put them in in a in an enclosed fenced area that's right at their eye level and they won't jump over it. Do you know why they won't? Because they won't jump anywhere they can't see. So I thought this went quite well along with us walking by faith because the enemy wants to put blinders on us and, and trap us in a place that we can't see. And, and the Bible says we're supposed to walk by faith, not by sight. And he tells us that you need to see everything that's going to take place. So you can't step out if you can't see what's going to happen. But God tells us that we're supposed to step out even when we can't see. So walking by faith is trusting God even when you don't see and don't understand. Amen. So I'm going to leave you, I'm going to leave you here today with that and say this to ask yourself, am I walking by faith? All right. Thank you, ladies. We are going to be.